should you or should you not prick your sausage? Welcome everyone to another episode of Beyond the Recipe where we take you past the sausage making recipe to help you become a better sausage maker. And as you can see right here, we've got our smoking it smoker fired up. Texas hot links are inside. And by the end of this episode, we are gonna get to the bottom of this issue. Should you prick or should you not prick? Let's talk a minute about why you would do either one. Not pricking your sausage is basically fueled by two motivations juiciness and flavor. The claim is that you're going to have a juicier, more flavorful sausage if you don't prick it because you're not allowing any of the fat to escape during the cooking process. On the other hand, those who prick their sausage see it completely different. They claim that you get a better snap in the final product and the sausage casing doesn't rupture during the cooking process. The science of why a sausage snaps is pretty extraordinary and here coming up, we'll do a video dedicated specifically to that. But the general idea is that you wanna get your sausage casing to properly adhere to the meat. And so those who prick their sausage, remove any possible air pockets that keep that from happening. In the process of doing that, they also allow little tiny holes for air to escape and for fat to escape so that as the sausage is expanding during the cooking process, it doesn't rupture the casing. All right, so that's kind of the school of thought for both techniques. We're gonna make our hot links and then just basically split them into two groups. One group will prick, the other group we won't. We'll weigh it before we cook it and then we'll weigh it again after we cook it just to see the percentage of moisture lost from each batch. And then we're gonna give it the good old fashioned taste test to see if one is juicier and tastier or if there's no difference whatsoever. Let's get into it. All right, folks, here's our ground meat, 70% lean, 30% fat pork shoulder. And we're gonna go ahead and get our spices into it. That's what that looks like, Texas hot link style. We're gonna take a portion of this and prick it. The other portion of that, we're not gonna prick it. And like I said earlier, we're gonna get it weighed and see what it is before and after. So let's just go ahead and get this stuffed into a casing and we'll get to pricking. Right, here's our first batch of sausage. We're gonna link them and give them a poke. Now, one thing I wanna do with this group, the prick sausage, is prick them excessively. I'm talking silly. Hundreds of pokes on the top and on the bottom. Normally, we don't prick our sausage this way. Normally, we just poke out the air pockets, but I wanna see whether or not we lose an excessive amount of fat due to the amount of holes that we're making. I mean, easily, we've got four to 600 holes in this sausage. And like I said, that's just absolutely outrageous. Normally you wouldn't do it like that, but for this video, let's see. This is also one of the points that the do not prick camp tends to argue is that you end up losing too much fat and fat equals flavor. So you end up having a less flavorful, less juicy sausage. So as we finish this up, this last little group is also gonna get pricked and we're gonna take this and place it into our refrigerator overnight which will help the casing dry out and it'll also allow the flavors to come together. This next group here is gonna be the unpricked group. And what I wanna do here is over tighten the links in such a way that they feel like they're gonna explode. Because I wanna see whether this casing ruptures during the cooking process, which is one of the arguments that the prick your sausage camp tends to have. Now I did stuff these nice and slow, so there's no air pockets to poke out anyway. They are thick and plump and I'm excited to see what's gonna happen. Truth is, I have no idea. So let's get that onto a wire rack into the fridge so that it can do its thing. And quick question for those of you watching, what sausage myths would you like to see me make a video about next? Leave your comment in the comment section below. All right, into the fridge. And it is now 12 hours later. This is what it looks like. We've got a nice dried casing. This looks absolutely beautiful. This is the unpricked sausage. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna weigh it. I wanna know how much weight our sausage loses after we cook it. We added 10% beer to the recipe and both the pricked and unpricked sausage, as you saw in the beginning, is just one batch of sausage divided into two. So our unpricked sausage weighs 1878 grams pre-cooking. Let's go ahead and weigh the pricked sausage. And we do have more of the prick sausage, but that's okay because we're measuring in percentages, so it really doesn't matter either way. The weight of the prick sausage weighs 3,229 grams. Let's record that information and get these into the smoker. Now, if you happen to have a smoke in it smoker, you gotta check out the new sausage racks. I just got mine in and they are absolutely brilliant. Super heavy duty, all stainless steel, 
and they separate your sausage just enough so that they all smoke beautifully and evenly. I'll put a link in the description box in case you want any information. I have the Smokin' It Model 4D and about four can fit in there comfortably. So FYI, let's get this out of the way and get the rest of these sausages on the racks. This right here is the unpricked sausage. And we're going to go ahead and get this into our smoker. I chose to cook these in the smoker today because, you know, we could do a barbecue pit. We could do a grill, the oven. We could poach them, whatever. But in the smoker, we get the most controlled temperature. This one's from smoking it, like I said earlier. And we can control the setting, and it's accurate to within a degree. And so that's exactly what I'm looking for. So these are going to cook in the exact same environment. What we're going to do right here is let these sausages dry. Now, standard operating procedure. These are going to dry for about an hour and a half. And then we're going to stair step the temperature. We're going to come in about 125 and then raise it to about 155 over the next couple hours. Finish off at about 185 till we get to an internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit. At which point we're going to let it hang there for about 30 minutes so that it's properly pasteurized. And then we'll cool them down and give them a taste. I like to fire up my cold smoker when I'm making sausages. This one is from Smoking It as well. It's called Bella's. Link in the description if you want information on that. And the reason I like adding cold smoke is because I typically like to add smoke much sooner than most everybody else. And this cold smoke generator allows me to do that. So we're going to get that fired up with a little hickory and apple wood. And this is what our sausages look like once they're done cooking. No problem. They look absolutely beautiful. We're going to get that into some nice cold water. Unprick sausage on the right, prick sausage on the left. I want you to pay attention to the water itself. What does your water look like once you're done giving them an ice water bath? Is it oily? Is it cloudy? Is it clean? Does it look like this? Very important. Leave me a comment in the comment section below to let me know what your water looks like. All right, let's give these sausages a weight check. Now, this is post-cooking. All we want to do is see how much weight our sausages have lost through the process of cooking. So, 1,642 grams for the unpricked sausage. Now let's do the pricked sausage. Once again, check out the water. Notice how it's not oily or greasy. That's very important. Let's go ahead and give this a quick weight check and see where we're at here. And it looks like this is weighing in at 2,000 716 grams. Now that's after cooking. We'll compare the differences here in a minute between the pricked and the unpricked sausage. Here we go. The moment we've all been waiting for, is there a huge difference? We've got our two sausages. This one here has never been pricked. And this one we pricked like a madman. So let's go ahead and cut into the pricked sausage first. Take a look at it. And then we'll cut into the other one and see if there's a big difference. Just visual inspection. At first glance, Bind looks great. Texture looks great. Super, super juicy. No complaints with this sausage. It's an awesome looking sausage. Okay, let's go ahead and cut into the other sausage. This one, remember, has never been pricked. And see if there's a huge difference right off the bat. Okay, bind looks exactly the same. This one also looks super juicy. Uh, but you know what? Maybe it's juicier than the other one. And the only way we could tell is by eating it. So let's go ahead and give each one of these sausages a taste and see if there's a quantifiable difference. All right, guys, moment of truth. This is the sausage that's been pricked, the Texas hot link. Amazing recipe. I'll put a link to the recipe in the description box below. Awesome flavor. So we'll be able to definitely tell whether one is more flavorful than the other. Let's just go ahead and give this one a bite. Wow, that is incredibly juicy. The casing has got a beautiful tender snap to it. It's spicy, it's flavorful. Everything you want out of a Texas hot lane. All right, let's try a piece of the sausage that was not pricked and see if there's a difference. Mm -hmm. That's delicious as well. I gotta be honest, it's hard to tell them apart. Both sausages are incredibly flavorful. They're both super juicy, and as far as the snap goes, let me give it another bite. That was the prick sausage. This is the one that wasn't pricked. Hmm. They're neck and neck. Both of them have a nice, tender, snappy bite. So 
What do we do with all this information? Well, let's start with the math. If you've been keeping up with the numbers, you might have already done these calculations. I'll go over them right now with you quite quickly. The unpricked sausage started at 1878 grams and finished at 1642 grams. That means through the process of cooking, we lost 12.5% of the original weight. The pricked sausage started off at 3,229 grams and we finished at 2,716 grams, which means we lost 15.8%. So the difference between our unpricked sausage and our pricked sausage was only 3.3%. But after tasting it, I gotta be completely honest, I didn't notice a 3.3% difference in flavor, in texture, or in juiciness. There were a few things that I did find incredibly fascinating. For starters, the sausage that was pricked with 400 to 600 different holes didn't lose that much more fat than the sausage that was pricked, which kind of dispels the myth that if you prick your sausage, you're going to lose all your fat. The reason we didn't lose our fat in our sausage was because this was a properly made sausage. We paid attention to temperature, both before mixing and grinding. Our equipment, both the knife and the plate, was sharp. We used a dedicated sausage stuffer rather than our grinder to stuff our sausage, and we cooked our sausage properly. A properly made sausage should retain most of its fat. It certainly shouldn't be leaking out all over the place. And so the weight loss that you saw between both the pricked and the unpricked is a combination of what we call added moisture. So in this case, it was beer that's been evaporated, bound moisture, which is the water that the muscle naturally has, and then of course, a little bit of fat. But that little bit is minuscule, which is why both the pricked and the unpricked sausage was still super juicy, even though one had a tremendous amount of holes in it for that fat to leak out. The other thing that I found incredibly interesting was that our sausage casings never ruptured. And the reason why our sausage casings didn't rupture, even though we overstuffed them, and trust me, every time I made a link, I felt like those links were gonna explode. That's how tight it was. And even though we cooked for six and a half hours, the reason they didn't rupture was because we cooked our sausages nice and slow. The hotter and the faster that you cook your sausages, the bigger risk you run of having your casings rupture. And that applies to both the prick sausage and the unpricked sausage. That's why it's always a great idea to cook your sausages gently, preferably on indirect heat. The method in which you make your sausage is gonna directly affect the outcome. And if you have a well-made sausage, like we did today, it does not matter if you prick or don't prick. The difference between pricking and not pricking your sausage is so minuscule, in my opinion, that it doesn't matter either way. I didn't feel like we lost any flavor, any juiciness, nor the texture. So if you currently prick your sausage, prick away. If you don't prick your sausage, that's great too, because you're gonna end up with an awesome sausage either way. I'm gonna finish this video up with one final thought. When it comes to air pockets in sausage, uh, you wanna to try to avoid them at all cost. One way to avoid air pockets is to stuff your sausage very slowly using the appropriate size stuffing horn. You also wanna make sure that you pack your meat in the hopper in such a way that you don't create air pockets as you're stuffing your sausage. If you happen to create air pockets, at the bare minimum, regardless of what camp you're in, I would suggest poking out the air pocket. Now in this video, we got completely outrageous with poking our sausage because I wanted to over-exaggerate a particular point, but my advice would be to at least prick out the air pockets. You want the meat and the casing to have a bond after it's all said and done. That's gonna give you a nice snappy bite. But if you have an air pocket, and sometimes they're inevitable, that little air pocket is gonna keep that casing from sticking to the meat. As the sausage cooks, if you don't prick, the fat that's rendered won't have anywhere to go, so it'll fill that air pocket. And often, it'll create a little river between the meat and the casing, which could turn your sausage casing a little chewy. Now, I'm not gonna get into the science of the snap. Like I said earlier, we're gonna have a dedicated video to show you exactly what causes a snap and how you can increase the snappage of your sausage. So that's all I got for you today, folks. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section below. If you like this type of content or got anything out of it, a great big thumbs up encourages me to make more videos just like this one. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, click that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of our uploads. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.